Yeah, hi Fizzy. We're kind of um, unprepared, but we'll be fine. We're I'm fine. Just eating some lunch. It's four o'clock. I know. I've been busy. Hi, Hardy. This is actually my dad's apron. No hug? What do you want me to do, Fizzy? You want me to hug the camera? This is actually my dad's apron. Okay, so we got we got a lot going on this evening. Maybe too much. Maybe too much. Probably too much. Um, we'll be baking miso cookies, which have already been prepared, and then we're making herb jelly. We're cooking. We're making chili and hummus. I'm curious to see what real uh, fresh hummus tastes like. Yeah. So that's gonna be fun. I'm excited for the hummus. Yeah, so right now I'm I'm prepping uh, chicken and pork for the barbecue because what we're making tonight, I don't know if the rest of the house is gonna eat for dinner. I, I, it's a it's a bit of a weird spread. Having chili hummus herb jelly for dinner. Or herb jam. Herb jam technically. And, and, and then miso cookies for dessert. Yeah. Who knows? No salad. And no salad. Same thing. Yes. <laughs> beef, yeah. ch beef chuck roast. We're making, we're making chili from some good. I meats. want to know what miso cookies are. Well, they're cookies. Well, the miso almond butter cookies. Miso almond butter. And it's actually from a recipe of miso peanut butter cookies that I changed a little bit. And. The recipe came from the New York Times via someone else. It was a mistake recipe. Someone was trying to make peanut butter cookies and didn't have enough peanut butter. So they had miso, which is kind of like the consistency of peanut butter. So they threw that in and it ended up tasting really good. It kind of gives it a salty kind of flavor, miso -y flavor. So I modified it to almond butter and chunk, uh, crunchy almond butter. She used crunchy peanut butter in it. And I made them gluten free, just to be on the wild side. Still has a lot of sugar in it. Okay. What's the difference between jam and jelly? Uh, oh, jam is made with whole fruit and you keep the whole fruit. Jelly is the kind of the liquid from a, uh, a fruit, like you would make apple jelly or pomegranate jelly. So it's a liquid that you um, turn into... You add gelatin to You add, yeah. Well, actually you add pectin, which you put in... Um, pectin is what gives um, jam and jelly its um, form, you know. And you add that to it, you cook it, and it turns into a clear jelly. Whereas jam has chunks of fruit in it and things like that. So that's kind of the difference. Right? I make pomegranate jelly. I like saying these things because really it makes good. it sound like I'm some super like little mini Martha Stewart here, which I'm not. But anyway, once a year Docs. I make it. Yeah. So um, the pomegranate jelly is really good. It is. It, it is good. It's a labor of love. What should we start on? Well, this is gonna take a while. Let's have you start cutting up the beef. Okay. Now this is a, a big chuck roast. You need two pounds of meat for this chili recipe. So this is really nice quality. You don't want to see how much I spent on this, don't you? I saw it. I know. Well, I got 20% off. Still. It was on sale. Still. Now two, I mean, wait, put olive oil and salt and pepper and garlic powder on those. I think we need a mom stream just to teach us how to be adults. Yeah. <laughs>
they they gave me sh they're they're giving me shit one time because I, I made a I had a frozen pizza. Oh and I, yeah. And I'm you know I'm, I cooked it right, and they're all saying it was undercooked. But you know I mean. Why does listen, it look uncooked? I don't know. Well, but they said it was uncooked. They said like, oh, you like that's still frozen, da 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 da. But like, you know, I know I'm an idiot, but I'm not that big of an idiot. I no. like, I know what a cooked pizza looks well, like. Well, I think I know what the problem is with frozen pizzas. Because hmm. when you cook them, they never, they they get a little brown. Sometimes they get brown, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they still look the same, just less frozen than when you right. put them in the oven because they don't like bubble and brown. Right. You know, so they, they look almost like they're fake. So that's kind of the problem. So I have soaked uh, a cup and a quarter of chickpeas overnight, and they are now ready to be drained. Here you can see the chickpeas. And it's obviously more than a cup and a half now. They've grown, they've grown up soaking in water. We're gonna be a little bit all over the place. We'll be jumping from working on the chili to working on the hummus to working on the herb jelly to and then back and forth all in between. So, the next day, drain the chickpeas, place in a medium saucepan over high heat and add the drained chickpeas and baking soda. Cook for about three minutes, stirring constantly. Add water and bring to a boil. Save the garbanzo bean juice, mix for great egg white substitute and cocktail. We're not making any cocktails around here with egg whites. Ertz. That's true. You, you can't use it as Ertz, Ertz is a Southern California elitist, by the way. Oh. Oh, we're gonna use a food processor today. We're gonna use it twice. Okay. So, on to meat. Let's just see how kind of sections here. So just kind of cut. Why you vegetarians out there don't watch? Let me stop for a second. Now we're putting the chickpeas in the pan with the baking soda to scrub it. Okay, here we go. This way you have to get a larger piece of meat so you can cut off all this stuff so it still ends up being two pounds. So I'm going to slice it like this. It's about a half inch, maybe a little bit less. How's it looking? Definitely the film is coming off. Oh, it is? Ooh, that's exciting. So the recipe calls for six and a half cups, but we're just going to put in enough um, water to cover maybe the chicken. Maybe just a little bit more, because they're going to grow a little bit. Okay, that's good. Okay, so what is it? Now they have to uh, bring it to a boil. Bring it to boil. Okay, you watch that. Cook skimming off any foam and any skin. The chickpeas will cook for 24 hours. Okay, all right. So let's get back to this. All right, you're gonna start doing the cookies. Okay. Like I said, we're kind of jumping around here. So the miso cookies have already been prepped. Here's the dough. And what I'm going to be doing is taking them using no, you can make them as, this. You can make them pretty big. So just kind of put yeah, this so in there. Yeah, scoop and roll it and then roll it in there. And so I'm going to scoop them out, roll them into a ball, and then I have some very coarse uh, brown sugar here to roll them in. Called... How do you pronounce that? Demerara cane sugar? Yeah. Oh, it's cane sugar. Like that? Yeah, you can do a little bigger. They'll go faster. Bigger. bigger. Sorry. So you kind of cut these up in like little chunks. Like you slice it about like that. You cut that in half. South American cane sugar? Yeah. Fun fact about Demerara sugar. It's often believed the original form of sugar used in uh, an old fashioned. It's also a type of sugar used in many uh, Barbados rum. Hey, you know, 
Ernst, Ernst always has the booze facts. If it's about booze, Ernst probably knows something. He's a functioning alcoholic. Oh, it's basically Caribbean sugar. Oh, Devon knew that. Oh, good job, Devon. How do you, Devon? I did not know that. Well, it makes a really nice crunch on a cookie. You can put about, if they're that size, you can do three across. Okay. Welcome to the kitchen. Hello, Rosie. Do miso cookies uh, taste like miso soup? No. It, 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 it's, I think the miso is more for the consistency. Uh, it makes yeah. it moist. It does. It's and, cool. and uh, it makes them really nice and soft. It gives it a little bit of a salty flavor. So we're going to bake the cookies at 350 degrees for 13 minutes. 13 minutes. Guess what? But It's hummus time. Is it? Yeah, we're going to get hummus done. So the chickpeas are done boiling. We've drained them. Okay, one cup plus two tablespoons of tahini. Okay. First we do, whoa, chickpeas. Uh, can I need uh, that's a fun smell. Pour that in there to measure it. Thank you. Okay, I'm just to make sure you know what I meant. Okay, I do this until I get a stiff paste. Okay, yeah, I'm trying to Okay, so this is while the machine is running, add the tahini paste, lemon juice, and garlic. And one and two teaspoons. No, you can't do that. This is, this is gonna be tough. Okay. Ooh, that is a small haul to feed okay. this through. Just to show you guys, this is where we get our lemon juice from. And uh, yeah, you, there's, there's a picture of Monty Don hanging from the tree. That's, uh, I don't know, that's, that's all my mom, don't worry about it. But this is our lemon tree. Joe Gitch is your MVP. Get out of here, homie. Lemon juice. You fake, homie. Mookie, Garlic. homie. Mookie. Garlic. They're still sour, Ernst. Yeah. They're good or they're good oranges. They're good lemons. Voila! Almond butter miso cookies. Oui. Hummus. Hummus complete. Transfer to the bowl, cover the surface with plaster crack and let rest for at least 30 minutes. If not using straight away, refrigerate until needed. Make sure to take it out of the fridge at least 30 minutes before serving. Actually, to serve top of the fridge, you're going to buy olive oil. This hummus will keep in the refrigerator up to three days. Well, three, gonna, three days? It's going to keep a lot longer in my refrigerator time right now. Okay, on to chili. Clean the board. 
Because we have to chop an onion. I forgot about that. We need a third person to wash dishes while we do this. Dad! <laughs> no, don't make me do that. So now we're back to the chili. So cookies are done, hummus is done. Now we're gonna focus on the chili for a little bit. We've already we've already uh, diced up the meat for the chili. So we're gonna take a white onion now and dice that up. I won't cry. I'm already dead inside, I can't cry anymore. recipe also says to use, have you, have you seen that, those strained tomatoes in a box? It's called, I think it's POMI, um, P-O-M-I, it's an Italian brand. Um, and the chef that did this recipe uses that. It's basically strained or crushed tomatoes. And you don't have to, you, you can use, I put in the recipe that he posted, you can put in two cans of um, crushed tomatoes. Now, I have one can. This is crushed. These are fire roasted from Mir Glen. This is a really good brand. <coughs> They're organic. Do you think we won't get to the... Uh... No, I don't. And, and to be honest, I don't think anyone's like, Ooh, herb jam! Woo! Oh my God, I'm trying to do what's popular. I'm trying to open their little... I know exactly how you feel, Mom. That's why I play PGA Tour 2K21. I don't do what's popular. I want to open people's minds. So we have to roast the cumin seeds. Cumin. Cumin. Put two teaspoons of those in a pan. And you just kind of roast them until they, you sort of just pull it off. Oh, you're doing it that way. Okay. So I'm gonna use the garlic that I prepped for for the herb jam because nobody wants the herb jam. Oh, okay. okay. We're not gonna do the herb jam. You, do you see where I get my pettiness from? I'm really sad, but it's all right. You see? Okay. So we got that, that. So whole white onion chopped, three cloves of garlic chopped, and next we have. Uh, Ancho chili powder, which I do, oh yeah, I do have it. Okay, tablespoon, light pot for chili. And, I gotta look at this book. So you put in the onion and garlic and cook till it's soft, and then you add the meat and cook for two or three minutes. It says, okay, it says until brown on all sides, but it never browns, it just gets liquidy. Oh, okay, I put in everything. This is? Spicy chili. It's not super spicy though. But it is spicy chili. Well, I'm sorry, Ernst. Tablespoon of ancho chili powder. Er Ernst is upset that there's only a tablespoon of ancho chili powder. Oh, Thomas, you're not watching the seeds. They are definitely fragrant. They are fragrant. Okay. Ancho to dried oregano. This is oregano from Lloyd's Produce in Winters, California. And we need a tablespoon. You can kind of eyeball. Mm -hmm. well, it, is yeah. it is squash season. Okay. Dry time. Oh. Hold on. Gotta go to the garden. Be right back. Wait, what do you need? Time. I need time. You need more time? You need more time. Like, the, the perks of living in California, living here. It's my mom, right? She's like, oh, we need time for this recipe. She just heads out in the backyard. She has a potted plant of thyme and just grabs it. Rosemary. Grab it in no time, huh? <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> Where did you come from? Got my door. And I mean, got my dough. I've been married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Got my dough. I don't think I know that one. All right, I'm just throwing this time in here. Okay, this is hot. Okay, olive oil. 
In go the onions. Onions. Okay. Here, do those around a bit, Thomas. And the garlic. You can put the garlic and the onions together. I'm going to do this a little differently for Thomas. I'm going to, instead of putting kidney beans in it, I'm going to put black beans and I'm going to add a can of corn. You guys, you guys got a good view of this? Is this an okay view? Is this what tall people see? Yeah. You're about seven feet up right now. It's like we're cooking for Shaq. <laughs> Mrs. Huddleston, thank you for inviting me over. <laughs> have a lovely home. We're so thrilled to have you. Get your concerns with the general. I don't know how hot this is supposed to be, but this recipe tells you to put two pounds of meat in this pot and cook it for two to three minutes and, and, to brown it. I'm like, I don't think that's going to happen. But. Here we go. Here we go. I also modified this recipe. It said a tablespoon of salt. The first time I made it, it was like, you want to taste one of the cookies? Yes. I'll try the messed up one. Yeah. Almond butter miso cookie test. <laughs> oh. It's got this nice little outer layer of crispiness. And then on the inside, it's nice and soft and chewy. And and I just made it with oat flour and just substitute oat flour for regular flour. It came out fine. Mm. Yeah, two to three minutes for browning the meat is uh, <laughs> no I, shock. <laughs> It, unless, you know, you get a, a pan like this big where you can... Double burner. Double burner, spread all the meat out so it can like... <laughs> guy lives on a ranch. It's probably... Good. Kent Rollins. Put that in there. These are all the spices going in. Here you go. Stir, baby, stir. Put in the beans and the corn. Corn? Beans? Corn. Whole can? Whole can. Throw the corn. Corn. Corn, corn. Corn. Woo! Tomato. This is chunkier tomato, so it's gonna... This is diced roasted tomatoes, because it's all I have. Because I didn't check. Put some of that in there. Ooh. Okay. That's gonna cook for 20 minutes, and then it's gonna be done. So. If you make the recipe, it's not going to look anything like this. I just want you to know that. Great. <laughs> because because I um, because I put corn and black beans in it, and I um, used some diced uh, canned tomatoes and some crushed tomatoes. So, but it's coming along. It's starting to look good. Ooh. Well, that's spicy. Good. <laughs> Here's the sink. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun tonight, Dad. Dad is not going to do that. I know. Oh, these cookies. And, and the cookies. Lest we forget the, the almond butter miso cookies. I know. Look at that. That's a nice simmer. Oh. It's coming along very nicely. Ooh, it looks the same, like cake batter. Nice. I hope you tried the chili, because once you make that chili recipe, it's really, really easy. Really easy. And you don't have to use a chuck roast, you can use a sirloin, you can use London broil kind of thing, but it's really easy and, um, you know, make it for yourself and. Your you know, friends. Your friend. Or friend. you have it for a couple days. Acquaintances. Yeah, just a little bowl of chili, some guac. Your family? Somebody. And you really have to try the cookies. They're, and for those of you that are gluten-free, 
they are gluten free. So. So, uh, that'll about do it for us. Um, oh, okay. you didn't say anything about my apron. Uh, you didn't say anything about your apron. I know. I hope you like my new apron. I put it. I had this dry cleaned. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to lose the niceness of it. And uh, this is the first time I've worn it since it's dry cleaned. I thought you guys needed to see something a little bit nicer. So. Yeah, my mom got an apron dry cleaned for you people. I hope you appreciate that. Well, it was worth it. But yeah, isn't it pretty? I love it. But other than that, thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you for laughing at me and laughing at me. Um, and thanks for wanting to watch me cook with them. It was really fun. I appreciate it. Other than that, as always, stay safe, work hard, be proud of yourself, and above all else, be lovely people. Because other than that, I don't really have much else to say. Except... <laughs>